turn to 1 Corinthians. Wow. There it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, very familiar verse. We're going to go ahead and tread over some waters we've been down before. 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians, not 1 Corinthians. That's why it wasn't coming to me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17, let's all stand together as we read the word of God. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The question tonight is, what are we really saved from? If you know the Lord as your Savior... What are you really saved from? Oh, preacher, we've heard all this before. I think it's good for us to hear it again. What are we really saved from? Amen? Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer tonight. Dear Lord, we love you. And Lord, all along the way, you've taken care of all of us. Lord, I can't remember one turn that you didn't help. I can't remember one step you didn't want to direct, even if I didn't allow it, Lord, you wanted to. Lord, I thank you for the ones that you did. Lord, please help the Thompson family going forward. Lord, I believe that you're going to do a great and wonderful miracle. I believe you're still doing it even today. Lord, please be with Brother Mark and Miss Betty. Lord, I think about them every day. Lord, please be with them. Help their hearts. I believe that they uh, have given it all over to you, Lord, which is something that is, Lord, that we can count on. And Lord, I, I'm so thankful that they're saved folks. I'm so thankful they know you because, Lord, you're so, so good to them. Lord, please help tonight as I preach your word. Lord, I need you to preach tonight, not me. They need to hear from you, Lord. And Lord, we sure do need you in a special way every day of our lives. Lord, please help. We love you, and we sure do thank you for loving us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. What are we really saved from? As we walk through life, it's amazing how often we can go ahead and change our thinking and change our ideas and change what God has done for us to uh, salvation comes along to a brand new person that got saved and boy they're so excited it didn't matter if the Lord ever did anything for them again they're so happy with Jesus Christ uh, so happy with uh, the Lord taking them out of the life that they once had so thankful for everything that God has done for them yet it seems like along the way we sometimes forget how good really God was when he saved us just the specific act uh, of being saved the specific act of God coming into our hearts and us asking him. That's why it's so simple to remember when you got saved. It should not be something that you can't remember or can't put a finger on or don't quite remember the date. I always worry about that because it's so important uh, when it happened. I'll never forget 11 years old, a man named Ron Brown led me to Christ. Uh, I never saw him again after that day, but I sure am glad he was standing his post that day. And uh, he, he in Super Church at the old Lighthouse Baptist Church upstairs in the upper room, that's where all the good ones go to get saved. And uh, the, the Lord, I, I got led to the Lord that day. Now listen, th that day uh, I got saved from a few things. And in our lives, we must remember what we get when we get saved. What do we get? What are we given? Now listen, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Something's different. Something has changed. Something is now something uh, that was not there before is now there. Something that was there before is now gone. What did God do for us when we got saved? I thought about some things, and I remember back in the Romans class oh, years and years and years ago, uh, back in 04 and all of that when the, uh, the Romans class was being taught. And I'm so very thankful as you turn to Romans chapter 6, there's a few things uh, that we're saved from. Romans chapter 6, and I'm so thankful for this uh, because it's something that allows us to do things for God. In Romans chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 16. Romans chapter 6, and, 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 and verse 6, Romans chapter 6 and verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. I am so thankful that we do not have to serve sin any longer. 
Now you must understand, is every one of us a sinner? Yes, we are still sinners. We're going to be sinners till we get to heaven. We'll get to that in a moment. But for right now, the Lord has given us the ability to not have sin have dominion over us. We don't have to sin, although we're going to be sinners, and inside of us is that sin nature. Uh, but God has taken care of the fact that we do not have to sin any longer. Now why do you bring this up, preacher? Uh, because folks that have been saved for a while sometimes forget uh, that God has taken that away from us. It's not because of how good you are. It's because of how wonderful he is that we have the ability to avoid sin. In your flesh dwelleth. But because of God, because of Jesus Christ, we have the ability to have sin not have the power over us. Now, will we still sin? Yes, but it's by choice. Sin is something that we make a determined decision to do. You may not think that. Uh, you may not want to do that, but it's the God's honest truth. You do not have to sin, but we are all sinners. Amen? Not only that, I want you to look at another verse, uh, uh, chapter 11, uh, or, or Romans 6, verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm a, if you want to see a Christian that is having a difficult time, look at one that's in the middle of sin. And by the way, <laughs> you don't have to tell me what they look like. You can just about tell it. They are folks that desperately want, listen, Lot's righteous soul was vexed daily. You can tell it when a person is in the midst of sin, having a difficult time, no longer relying on Christ, no longer thankful for his salvation, no longer a, a, a person that will, bless God, I am far beyond, I am now so good that I don't have to worry about this anymore. And they find themselves in sin. Now, the sin does not have power over them. They allow the sin to have power over them. They allow, they're giving themselves to that, making that choice. So the Lord says, hey, be dead to that. Don't let that have effect over you. When you got saved, you do not any longer have to let that have an effect or dominion over you. You can just reckon yourself dead to it. Now look, I want you to see one more verse. Same chapter, just a little further down. I want you to see uh, verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Look, I want you to see this one statement. Yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. When you got saved, you went from death unto life. So act like it. What this is telling you is you don't have to live in the doldrums of this life. You don't have to live discouraged. You don't have to live depressed, despondent, defeated. God has taken all that away. Live like you're alive. Well, that was the most dead amen I've ever heard. Am I in an ecumenical church tonight? Am I in an episcopal church? Understand this. Are we alive in here tonight? When you're, listen, who in the world would want to be saved? And if he's sitting in a crowd like this, would say, amen. Listen to me. When I got saved, Jesus Christ took the power of sin away. I don't have to yield. I can yield my members to righteousness. I can do things that God wants me to do. Before I couldn't do it, but now I can. Why? Because of him that lives in me, I can now be alive. Glory to God, you're not going to get some grand nugget of truth tonight. What you're going to get is an old path, an old way. Glory to God, we're the only ones that can have joy. We're the only ones that can have happiness. We're the only ones that can put a smile on our face. Why? Because Christ lives in us. So why would we want to be dead? Why would we want to be upset? Why would we want to live a life less than a spirit-filled life? I don't understand why you'd want to run with the zombies. I don't want to be the dead people. I want to be the ones that are alive. God has taken, what are we really saved from? We're saved from the power of sin. Sin hath no dominion over us. When you got saved, God gave you the ability to look to him. Boy, that's wonderful. Look at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. What are we really saved from? Boy, I love this. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind 
and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. When you got saved, you got saved from your past too. <laughs> now listen, I don't like to dwell there. I don't like to think about it. It's there. Everybody's got a past. Anybody in here, don't, you don't have a past? Okay. We all have one. Paul, penning this, the Lord penning this through him. Boy, what a great person to use. Amen. I'm forgetting those things which are behind. Because he's saved, he's got the ability to forget or start to forget those things. Which are, you'll never leave them completely behind. But you don't have to let guilt dog you down. Now look at me and listen to me. From here on forward, you're going to make mistakes. Those aren't going to go away. You've got the ability to not sin, but we probably won't. We'll probably go ahead and sin. We don't want to, but we will. Even Paul says it. But understand this. The past that I have is not something I've got to live in. If you live in the past, there's no way I could be a pastor. If I live in the past, there's no way I could preach the gospel. If I live in the past, there's no way I could soul win. If I live in the past, there's no way I could read this Bible with joy. If I live in the past, I can't do the things that I'm supposed to do. Aren't you glad that when you got saved, that past became irrelevant? It's what's going forward that matters. Paul was a murderer of Christians, throwing them in prison, uh, getting letters on purpose to go get people in jail over God's word. And here's what you've got. You've got a God that loves him so much that he kept on pricking him until he finally did right. We have the ability to forget or start to forget those things which are behind. I can't live there. And those that live there live a defeated life. Has anybody ever done anything wrong in your past? Did God forgive you of that? Amen. Then don't live there. Don't go back to the place. Well, bless God. God got me out of alcohol. Well, then don't drink anymore. Right. Right. God got me out of drugs and don't go back. God got me out of cursing. Well, then don't curse anymore. If God took you out of the sins that you were in, don't go back. When you got saved, we got saved from the ability uh, to go. We don't have to go back to the past. How about from guilt? Did you get saved from guilt? Look, look at Luke 18. Go with me to Luke 18. Luke 18, verse 9. Oh, I love this. Luke 18, verse 9. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. Boy, that's already a bad start. They that tr they, uh, unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. And by the way, can I help you a little bit? When you trust in yourselves, the other almost always goes with it. If you trust in you, be, you're going to despise others. You know why that is? Because you'd believe them to be lower than you. Right. Nowhere in the Bible will you, say, will you say that higher is right. Never. It's always abase yourself and exalt others. <laughs> if you deem yourself to be lower, helping others, that's scriptural principle. If you deem yourself to be higher, you're going to despise the others underneath you. Amen? All right, look now. Uh, Spake this parable. Verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. That's a good start. Two fellows going to pray. Hey, a lot of folks come to church, amen. Some even come up to the altar. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Now, neither one of those are very good. A publican is a tax collector. How many like their tax collector? Well, back in this day, it was even worse. If you didn't have the money, they'd get it from you. Whether from your land or your hide, they'll get it from you. Nobody liked the publicans. Amen? Look at this now. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, and I almost have to use a British accent for this. I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers. Or even as this publican. Now, I hope you've never done this. But bless God, if you come to this altar, 
Don't say, I'm glad I'm not him. Now, I, I don't believe this church suffers from that. But I find it pretty funny that two men came into the church, neither one of them good. And the one man stands up there and says, boy, God, woo I'm glad I'm not this person. I'm glad I'm not this person. I'm sure glad I'm not him. Now, I don't know if he heard this. But if he did, that'd be a problem. Amen? Which sinner is the greatest in this whole room? Amen. Nobody wants to put their hand up. Amen. Look at, look at me. Listen to me. Everybody's the same in this room. You, you need to understand there is no greatest. If you are a sinner, you're a sinner. That's just the beginning and end of it. If you all come up to this altar tonight, there's nobody next to you that's worse or better than you. We're all sinners saved by grace. Amen. So look now. So what are we saved from? If you look at this, what happens? Uh, this guy says, I fast twice in the week. He's not Baptist. I give tithes of all that I possess. Not Baptist. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He was a publican, remember. Somewhere along the line, it got a hold of his sinful heart. What he was doing was wrong. What is the altar for? What do you say from? He came down to the altar. By the way, you don't only need to repent at salvation, folks. It's something that you can take with you the rest of your life. You do something wrong, confess it. You do something wrong, forsake it. Bless God. God gave us the ability through salvation to get right again. Salvation happens and bless God. Oh boy, I'm great now. I'm glad, and I, boy, I'm glad. I've heard people, I'm glad I'm not this bad person. I'm glad I'm not that bad person. You're still a bad person. We're all sinners. And this publican came to grips with the fact, hey, listen, I don't deserve anything. Why? God be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. He didn't, he didn't list what it was. I mean, we can surmise what it was. He was a publican. We can surmise what it was. He's a thief. But please understand this. It wasn't about that. It was about the fact that he realized he was a sinner. Listen, don't ever get over the fact that God has forgiven your sin. Amen. Don't ever get over the fact that he didn't just forgive your past sin. He didn't just forgive your, your present sin. He forgave all of it, even your future. Don't ever get over being a sinner that's saved by grace. So this publican, what are, you, what are you free from? He's free from guilt. He's free from the guilt of what he's done. Look at what he says. I tell you in this parable, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. This young man, by the way, not exalted for people to see. Exalted by Jesus Christ. Amen. We go from the position of dead in sin to alive in Christ. That's the exalting. That's what it is. Jesus Christ forgave you of you. You don't have to live in a place where you can't forgive you. This man, l listen to me. This parable is spoken by Christ for a reason. It's not put in here just to have, oh, well, bless God, I see publican and this Pharisee and all oh, yeah, the Pharisee, boy, he really got it. That's not what it's about. It's about each and every one of us coming to the realization that he's forgiven our sin. He's forgiven. It doesn't matter what it is. This man listed things as Pharisee. He could have been telling truth. Maybe he never did any of those things. But that did not make him any less of a sinner. He certainly didn't list the ones he was guilty of. As we live through life, look now. This man was a publican. You know how many counseling sessions I have over people's past? Now listen. It's not that you don't have to visit it. It's that you have to realize that you give it to Christ and never go back. That's the ability. That's the joy. This man goes to the church and he says, I'm going to pray. He stands afar off probably because he didn't feel worthy. He stands afar off and smites his breast saying, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. He goes away. What's the Bible say? Justified. Do you know what justified means scripturally? If you've ever taken a Romans class, you heard it 800 times. 
just as if I've never sinned. Just as if I was never in the lost fallen race of Adam. What did he, what are we saved from? We're saved from our sin. We're saved from our guilt. We're saved from our past. Yes, you're allowed to repent. Oh, isn't that wonderful that God gives you that? Hey, listen, I remember when I was a kid and I used to break windows, it seemed like, all the time. It was just dumb about it, just throwing a ball off a garage with windows. I don't know what I was thinking, but I throw a ball right through the window. I remember one day uh, I was kicking a ball at this time. I kicked a ball right through the garage window and I ran. My dad came home. And my, my dad had a way of knowing that I had messed up. The question, I was an only child at that time. I was about eight years old. Uh, my brother wasn't even born yet. Who kicked the ball? Who's it going to be? My dad comes home. And my dad had this way. He, he did not say a lot of words, but the ones he did say were cutting words. Walked in the house and said, so, what happened to the window? And what did I do? <laughs> what window? <laughs> he looked at me and said, son, the window to garage. W wouldn't you stop dealing by that time? I mean, I was that dumb as a kid. The, the, the garage window. I don't know. He said, son, I found your ball inside the garage. And I put my head down and said, Dad, <clears throat> it wasn't me. I don't know who it was. Okay, son. Then he said this to me. Go to your room and think about what you did. Now, understand this. My room did not have an Xbox. My room did not have coloring books, toys. We were poor. You know what my room had? A bed. That's it. And my thoughts. So when my dad said, go into your room and think about it, that was torture. He'd walk in a little while later. He said, son, did you do it? I said, yeah, I did it. He said, you're punished. He said, but I want to teach you something. And by the way, punishment was a spanking. Punishment wasn't one, two, three. Punishment wasn't you're grounded. Punishment. It was spanking. And which I think is right, by the way, scriptural. So he spanked me. He said, now, son, you wouldn't have gotten this had you told me the truth. I would have forgiven you. But now you need punishment. You know, I, I've done things in my past, and each one of us has. Don't, don't look at me like, I'm glad I never did that, you Pharisee. <laughs> when I got saved... God wiped that all away. The Bible says your sins and iniquities I will remember no more. We don't have that ability, but I sure am glad he does. We don't have to have the guilt. Why can't you serve God? I, I just, you don't know who I was. Well, there are things that we can do that will uh, stop us from serving in certain ways, but there's never a person that can't serve God in some way. And he's given us the ability when we get saved, we can be saved from that guilt, uh, saved from that past, saved from what's been dredged up. Glory to God, Paul was the greatest missionary short of Jesus Christ and God used him that was a Christian murderer. I wonder if we can be used. What are you saved from? You're saved from the power of sin. You're saved from your past. You're saved from that guilt. List any that you wish, but I sure am glad that we're saved from that place called hell. Good Lord, have mercy. Can you imagine uh, not accepting Jesus Christ and going to a place called hell? Even if you never did anything else for Jesus Christ, you're at least going to heaven. Good Lord, I don't know why in the world we can't be happy as Christians. Why we can't get excited about the things of God. Oh, I don't know if we want to do a revival. I don't know if we want to do a tent revival. I don't know if we want to go so many days. Bless God, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm not going to hell when I die. There's folks all around us that are going straight to hell. And sadly, we don't care enough. But I'm glad I'm not going. Hey, listen, when I got saved, I got saved. And I've got a place being prepared for me in heaven. And I'm not going to hell. What are we saved from? 
that rich man lifted up his eyes, being in torments. It's real. Hell hath enlarged herself. It's real. You're not going there. You're not going to an eternal place that burns with fire. You're not going there, an eternal place that is darkness. You're not going there in an eternal body that will not be destroyed, but will be consumed for the rest of eternity by this fire. What you've been saved from. How often do we forget just the simplest things that God has given us? How often do we forget the goodness that God has brought us from saving us from this place called hell? It is real, it burns, and yes, I'm looking forward to heaven, but I sure am glad I'm not looking forward to hell. And I like this. Take your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians. I'm all done. Boy, it's five till. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I love this part. We're going to start in verse 52. Ah, 51, why not? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. He's coming. Oh, I don't know that we talk about that near enough, but Jesus Christ is coming. It's not going to be a grilled cheese sandwich. It's not going to be in some stupid rosary. It's going to be him coming. And when he comes, we're going to know all about it. Why? Because the Bible teaches us for the trumpet shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall be, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Aren't you glad? For this corruptible, which we are, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. I cannot wait for that day. Look at this now. What are we saved from? We're saved from corruption. What are we saved from? We're saved from being mortal. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. What are we saved from? We're saved from death. What are we saved from? We're saved from being corruptible. What are you saved from? We're saved from being mortal, bless God. If you were to die right now and you're saved, you go straight to heaven. You put on immortality. For the rest of our life, we don't have to see a clock or stamp a, a, a time clock card. Bless God, we're going to go to heaven. We're going to be there forever. What are you saved from? You're saved from the presence. Glory to God. Listen to this now. You're saved from the presence of sin. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how holy you live your life. You're still dogged by sin. You're dogged by those around you that sin. You're dogged by this old sin-cursed world. But there's going to be a day when sin is no more. Sin is no more. No, wait a minute. Any of it. Little white lies, does this suit make me look fat? White lie to me. Lie to me, sinners. <laughs> no, but your face does. Anyhow, all sin evil thought you wanting me to close early evil thought <laughs> now your thoughts in heaven are man preach on preacher no amens there thank you <laughs> no sin of thinking you're better than somebody else no sin of gossip all gone living in the joy of the Lord is a normal no aches. What do you save from? No aches? Are you kidding me? I'm not sure how long ago it was that I had no aches. No pain? No tears? We're going to have tears one more time. And then God's going to wipe them all away. What do you save from? The thing, when, the, when, the, when the hymn says, And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. You know what that is? That's remembering how good salvation is. Hey, listen. I hate playing basketball against a kid that can jump 8 million miles in the air. And then when he lands, looks at me like this. It makes me want to 
box. I'd probably lose that too. Anyhow, no, no, no sin. From the presence of sin. Now it's the power. Can you imagine being removed from the presence? Every thought is only good continually. Every thought is only right continually. We'll be in the presence of Jesus Christ. What are you saved from? We're getting to see the master. We're getting to see uh, the nail-pierced hands. We're getting to see uh, uh, the, the side. We're getting to see the Jesus Christ that saved us. We might get to meet him. Get to walk with him and talk with him. We'll have an eternity to do this. What are you saved from? This earth that we're only passing through, what is your life? It's even, even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Why, the, listen, we say, oh, bless God, life goes so fast. It does. But what are you saved from? Yes, we're going to get through this life. And yes, some folks pass away. And yes, they do. But understand this. Heaven's forever because of him. How do you save from? It's hard to get down in the dumps when you realize how good God is when it comes to our sin. What are you saved from? It's so easy to say, well, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. If that was it, it would be enough. But he doesn't stop there. He takes us away from the power of sin. He takes us away from the, from the guilt in our past and he goes ahead and says, listen, I'm preparing a place for you that where I am there ye may be also. All I'm asking you to do is tell folks about me. Tell folks about me and show what it's like to be a Christian. You want to see some Christians? Come Saturday. You want to see some folks that know what it is to be saved? Come Saturday. This is not going to be a funeral. This is not going to be a sad day. It's going to be a day of joy because they know what they've been saved from. Oh, cancer can take his physical body. But the moment it does, he goes home to be with the Lord. He may not be able to see here. But he's going to see real well there. Help me now. And I know that's hard to deal with while we're here. But what do you save from? What's your Lord do, done for you? What's your Lord doing for you? Why, why would we be discouraged? What do you save from? Isn't it a wonderful thing to be a Christian? Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you for this night. Lord, I know this is simple. Uh, I know that these are uh, things that we've talked about so many times before. But Lord, I feel sometimes that we forget how good you are. We forget those things. And Lord, sometimes that lets the world come in and, and discourage us. And Lord, we should not be discouraged people. We should be people that are thrilled uh, with what you have done. Oh God, you've done so many things for us by coming to this earth and dying for us. And Lord, uh, giving us the ability to get saved and remove us from the penalty of sin. Oh God, you took the penalty on yourself. Then you removed the power of sin over us. Lord, we don't have to succumb to that anymore. And Lord, one day, glory to God, you're going to remove us from the presence of sin altogether. Lord, putting away sin forever. Oh God, I cannot wait for that day. But while I'm here, Lord, let me forget the things that could hinder me from serving you. Let me go forward. Let all of us go forward in joy, in happiness, relief. Oh God, what a relief it is to be a Christian, to not have to worry about a place called hell. Lord, it's not for us. And Lord, the folks that are saved are never going to see it and we're never going to go there. And Lord God, that is such a wonderful thought. Lord, thank you. All I can say over and over again is thank you. What are you saved from? Lord, I'm so thankful for what you've done for each and every one of us. Lord, this is your time now. Bless the invitation. Oh Lord, please be with each and every one of us. We love you and we sure do thank you for loving us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together. What are you